Hello, my name is Tom Bowman, physical therapist. Um, I'm from Apex Orthopedic Rehab. We're going to talk about tennis elbow today, also known as lateral epicondylitis. Um, we're going to give you some ideas at the very end, so stay tuned as far as the uh, exercises that we feel are the biggest bang for your buck at the end, so stay tuned. But first, let's talk about who gets this. So the irony is that I've treated very few people with tennis elbow um, that play tennis. So this may be the cause most times it's people with any kind of repetitive overuse injury. It could be people that are on the computer a lot. It could be our plumbers, our mechanics, people are doing a lot of like physical labor. It also can be our weekend warriors. When I say warriors, our people that are doing a lot of home fixing. They're doing a lot of activities um, at home that they're not used to, but they're, they're doing it sporadically. And sometimes they're just not ready for that repetitive task. And it causes an onset of tennis elbow. But that being said, it can happen to a myriad of people. It can happen with different sports. Um, we see a lot of people that have, um, they're active in the gym, especially like reverse curls, certain kind of forward lifting, certain types of heavy Olympic weight training. Sometimes they are more susceptible and can develop some of these problems. So the age group can be around that 35 to 40 upwards, of, you know, mid 50s is kind of the range you can get it. You can get it earlier or later. But that's kind of the range that you're going to see a lot of these problems, <clears throat> problems exist and all that and actually turn up. So a little bit about the anatomy, okay? So basically, um, tennis elbow is a, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a tendon that comes together called a common extensor tendon. Extensor meaning wrist extension, finger extension, okay? You have these tendons that come together into the muscle bellies, and then they attach on this little knob called the lateral epicondyle. Okay, you actually have one on the other side called the medial epicondyle, and that's more of that golfer's elbow, okay? What we're talking about here. And so all these tendons come together into a common extensor tendon that attaches in this region. The one that we find that's affected the most is the extensor carpi radialis uh, brevis. That particular tendon is the one that they seem has more of the trouble than anything else in that region at that attachment point. So that's the anatomy. It's right here. Um, you'll find sometimes with that gripping that this muscle has to stabilize and this tendon that goes in here and it receives a fair amount of stress. You'll notice that oftentimes too that's a little bit more stressful with the arm extended for certain tasks and kind of a little bit more bent. There's more compression to the tendon and it's more irritating to it. So when we go into the exercises, we're going to talk about different ways to exercise it so we kind of put it in the friendliest position when we work on it. But Anyway, these muscles come together um, and cause some problems, but it's interesting enough, we are, we, we're going to focus on this, this area as well, but also there tends to be this generalized weakness that's created, especially with people that have had this, this condition for not just an acute, like the, you know, the first few weeks, it's someone that's had it for a long time. They actually tend to develop problems all through the shoulder girdle and generally weakness to the flexors, all the muscles that are sur uh, surround um, the elbow above and below that joint. So keep that in mind. But the ones we're going to focus on is really targeting that tendon and musculature. Um, we'll discuss that particular strengthening um, uh, in very, very soon. So realize there can be other things that mimic tennis elbow. So you really want a good clearance. You want to, you know, in, in a perfect world, and I know we can't always be there, where is we need someone, a physician or a physical therapist, to kind of make a diagnosis and to make sure they're not talking about something that's not related to this tendon not functioning well. Um, it can, um, you can get other things that can create instability in the elbow. Um, you can have arthritis in, in there, stress fractures. You also can, can get a contribution, a referred pain from the shoulder that'll give you, let's say, a rotator cuff problem that's given you pain in this region. Um, there's certain neck problems that you'll see. Um, they'll have pain in the elbow area. They won't even have neck pain, they'll just have elbow pain. So a good screen and make sure we really have, um, have the right diagnosis is something that you, you, you probably want to get your hands on. If you listen to these exercises, you realize that they shouldn't, and, and the strength, the strengthening exercise, nothing should be made worse by this, okay? So if you're unsure, probably good to get a good evaluation and, and check it out before you take that step. In some of the advanced cases, when someone's had this thing for a while, like I said, there's a lot of weakness associated throughout the whole, you know, shoulder girdle, all the muscles that cross the elbow and even into the hand. Um, you will occasionally see, you'll see they'll come in, I have a woman that came in recently and her elbow was in this position. She said, I've had this for about a year. And um, she had a definite loss of motion, so we really were addressing that first. So you may see a little loss or inability to straighten the elbow compared to the other side. So, you know, first is let's get the diagnosis, make sure it's not mimicking something else. Um, I would say if you don't see differences in the next, you know, cup two or three weeks, some change of improvement, 
might be something else going on. Maybe we're treating the wrong area. Maybe it's not the right solution to this problem. Location of pain, you know, I've got pain here or here, is sometimes deceptive. Sometimes that's not the pain generator. And we've talked about this in previous videos. It's like a person that's having a heart attack and they're actually feeling jaw pain. And they don't, and they, so it can kind of be get a little confusing, especially when you're talking your own body. You're biased, you're scared. What do I got here? So keep that in mind and get a good diagnosis if you can. One thing that we use to kind of do a diagnosis, and it's not absolute, but it gives us a good idea if we're talking about a tennis elbow, is basically called the chair test. It's one of the tests we'll use clinically in, uh, in, in that kind of redundant in the clinic. But basically we put palms down in the very end of the armrest here, and we're essentially going to kind of lift it away from our side. And as we lift it up, it puts a tremendous amount of tension, especially like we talked about, when the arm is very straight, it puts a lot more tension. It's a lot more provocative, irritating. If we keep our elbow straight, palms down, and just lift off the floor, okay? That position can be very irritating and test is a positive test. It doesn't guarantee that's the only thing that's going on. In fact, sometimes you'll even have, well, the tenderness is right there, and still can be arthritis or something coming from your neck or another structure, so keep that in mind. So one of the questions come up before we even treat this, someone will call me up and say, hey, do I, need a, do I need an MRI or an x-ray? Now listen, if you've had a fall, a trauma, a significant event, um, you're walking down the stairs and you, you put your hand back and grab the handrail and got a jolt, yes, obviously you may need an x-ray or an MRI. If it just kind of came on gradually and doesn't show signs of you know, tremendous swelling or redness or you're, develop, you're developing fever, something really significant, generally an MRI is not necessary or an x-ray in the early stages. I would say within, you know, like I said earlier, if, if you, two or three weeks you're not seeing a change, may, the diagnosis may not be right, or maybe you need something that, you know, more extensive, you want to do an MRI that'll show some of the soft tissues, tendon, ligaments around the area. But that shouldn't be the reflex to take that step before you actually initiate treatment most of the time. Just consider that, don't get worried, start it. If you don't respond to the treatment two or three weeks, most six to eight weeks, then maybe you, you wanna you know, look at something. I'm not saying it's cured or it's fixed by that point, but it should be kind of tracking in that direction. They can take a while, they can be stubborn because we need to use our hands and it's hard to really rest these structures, but just keep that in mind. So there's a few things that you can do in the early stages. Let's say the first one or two weeks where you really, it's really aggravated. Maybe it's something you've had for a while or something, you just did a new activity or helping your dad around the house or doing something repetitive and boom, it started bothering you. So in the early stages, sometimes um, there is some inflammation. I consider this more of a degenerative condition. But let's say it's just started. You're feeling like it's a little, little warm. It feels, you know, just un not uncomfortable. You can try if your doctor allows, and I can't prescribe, I'm a physical therapist, but sometimes some over-the-counter anti-inflammatories like Advil, if there's any inflammation, Motrin, something like that, or Tylenol. But make sure you're allowed to do that, and that's something that you have to check first. Um, also, sometimes just doing a, a little bit of gentle ice in the area. Some people feel that'll kind of numb the area. There's this belief about dropping inflammation, but at bare minimum, it'll kind of numb it and make it feel better. And sometimes it'll get you past those early stages. Other things you can do, you can use these counterforce braces um, and just in that, in, in, in envision you've got this tendon, this wire rope that's attaching right here on the lateral abacondyle. So this structure right over here, okay? And the tendon attaches there and what we're doing is when we put these braces on, and there's, a, there's a few different types, this just happens to be one called, uh, this is air, air cast is the one of the ones. And there's other types, there's different types here and all that. It's a matter of comfort, okay? So all we're doing is we're placing this, this brace right before the point. So if this is the attachment point, we want to go just a little bit past where the tendon is more tendon, almost more musculature. We want to kind of pinch it. And the whole idea is that by strapping this on, all the pressure from the muscles and all the tension, because this is like a line, like it's like a, like a chain, almost a linkage here. So it goes past this point, it presses that point, so there's a less tension that's applied through where the tendon goes into the bone here and the surrounding structures. So it's supposed to offset some pressure. Um, I tend to tell people they really want to do it is to do it um, when they're doing the activity that really bothers it. Don't, delete, don't leave it on at rest. Um, there is a nerve that you can kind of compress in the area, the radial nerve, and you can cause some irritation if you really strap it to, down too long, sleep with it, or use it repetitively. You do want some time where it's off so the area can heal and you don't affect blood flow to the area. So realize that it is an option. 
talk about the anti-inflammatory, sometimes taking some of these natural remedies like turmeric or ginger, some people feel more of a natural remedy to it, and that may um, make you feel more comfortable depending on the person. But obviously anything you take in your body, you want to really make sure uh, you're allowed to take. It can have some effect on you. So um, that's if there's any inflammation. If this is really more degenerative, it's like little tears in the tendon, we really eventually want to put some pressure through it, through loading it, and that's the next stage we're going to talk about. Okay, the first thing we're going to start with, you know, as far as the first stage of exercise per se, once we kind of figured out some of the triggers and kind of it cal it's calmed down a little bit, you got to also go by your tolerance. The first one is just some active range of motion exercises. So, <clears throat> place your hand <clears throat> or your forearm down, a little bit down on your thigh so it's stabilized, and you'll do some simple up and down like that. Go as far as full range of motion all the way into flexion and all the way back into extension. If it's really painful at the very end, keep it to like mild pain, do a limited range of motion for a while. So we're gonna do about two times for 30 repetitions, once or twice a day. Sometimes you can do it every day, sometimes you have to break it up similar to the strength thing we're gonna talk about later on, two to three times a week for 24 to 48 hours in between, depending on the person and how sensitive. We just wanna get that right load to stimulate some healing, but not overdo it. Okay, so we have <clears throat> this flexion extension. Then we're gonna flip over, we're gonna work um, uh, the flexors of the wrist here two times for 30 seconds. And then we'll work a few where we're just turning up our palm and turning down supination and pronation. So two sets of 30, one or two times a day. That should take you about one or two weeks phasing into that, depending on your tolerance. Um, as we go further, um, the second stage is we're going to get into more of the strength and we're actually adding an external load, like a dumbbell, elastic band, um, different some devices going to increase a little load <clears throat> right into those, those tendons that are in that area. Now granted, these are really directly loading the tendon, but we also just want to get a little of this general mobility through the wrist complex and a little bit of movement there, all kind of indirectly hit that area, obviously more so this and the supination and pronation. So we start with that, active range of motion, see how it goes. I actually sometimes will include, depending on how sensitive it is then, because I generally put this at about 60 degrees, then we'll try a few that with the arm extended. Unfortunately, when the elbow is extended, the muscle uh, or tendon of this muscle, the extensor carpi radialis brevis, um, that's the one that they have most of the trouble with. When you extend out, that tendon gets a little compression as it, as it attaches in this region. So it's a little bit more sensitive. Um, but you know, at a certain point, we want to you know, work positions where the arm's out and also bent. So keep that in mind. So that's the first phase. Second phase uh, we're going to talk about is more the strengthening phase. Um, this one can go between you know, three to four weeks. Um, and four weeks, we should see some changes. Maybe not everything is resolved but some, okay? Um, besides the dumbbells, there's some what they call isometric exercises where you're essentially holding um, the arm, same position, a little bend in the elbow, and you're applying pressure downward like this. I pretty much keep it simple just to this exercise and I'll have you do it five times for 45 seconds, uh, once or twice a day. This phase, sometimes um, when you allow a little irritation, I find the isometrics sometimes make the condition worse. So I will sometimes include it um, in certain tendon problems. The isometric exercises, like in Achilles problems, um, will actually cause an analgesic effect. It'll, it'll reduce the pain, it can be helpful. Sometimes it actually makes it worse. So we have to kind of go by the person. Um, when in doubt, um, you're doing mild pain, you're doing this five times for a 45 second hold. As you're doing it, you should start getting, if it's the right exercise for you, you'll notice it actually starts feeling better. If you're going, wow, I'm doing this, even like little or no discomfort, and it's getting worse as I'm doing, you know, after the second or third time, you're like, wow, it's getting more and more sensitive. Isometric may not actually be the form of exercise or strengthening because it's actually creating a load more than the active movement. So you may want to kick that out. Try it, see if it helps you out. It should be neutral or better, but it should not make it feel worse, okay? So keep that in mind. Some of the research on tendon problems, they'll say go into that painful range, especially at the Achilles. So I would be a little more conservative, especially if you're not being guided by a therapist, okay? So keep that in mind. And we're gonna go into our second, uh, on our, second our next phase as far as the strengthening. So there's a few exercises I want you to do. In this phase, we're probably gonna be looking at two to three times a week. Uh, to be conservative, you're not really sure, 
do it two times a week and maybe do it more of a 24 to 48 hour um, time in between. So Monday, Wednesday, let's say for an example, or even Monday, Thursday for a little bit more recovery if you're not sure. Okay, so you can use a dumbbell. I'm using actually a pretty heavy one here. I'm actually not having a problem with this, which is good. Um, but we want. I'm using five pounds. You may want to use like even five, uh, even a pound or even a half pound. Okay. Um, you can start with some soup can if you don't have a dumbbell, but start with that and start with a lower load. Same idea. Have your arms supported with a forearm, elbow a little bit bent there. And let's start with the primary one, um, wrist extension like that, all the way up. One, two, th three, up. One, two, three, four, down. A little bit more on what they call the eccentric phase, that lowering phase. The concentric phase is this phase where the actual muscle shortens. Um, and, and put some pressure on the, uh, on the tendon and the common extensor tendon here. And then the um, eccentric phase as it lowers back down is really important. We don't rush that. We want to do that phase as well. Um, the eccentric training for tendon disorders is one of the, you know, the hallmarks, but they found that concentric and eccentric training can both render positive results. We've got to see which one you tolerate. Sometimes people can't tolerate the eccentric. It really bothers them. All right. So this phase, we're looking at that three to four weeks. So we had one or two weeks of the active motion. You might be able to shorten that a little bit, maybe three or four weeks of the strengthening phase. So this is for wrist extensors. Okay. So all the way up, all the way down. In some phases, when we go a little higher weight, we can actually bring, and we can do strictly just eccentric, we can bring the weight up and then lower during that phase. So that is for the wrist extensors. I will sometimes progress as the, the program advances more towards the end. We'll do it with an elbow straight, arms supported, all the way up and all the way back down. In general, we're just kind of working on other muscles in the area. These does not directly uh, load the, the tendons that are kind of affected here is we'll work on a little bit of wrist flexion as well. Same idea. And I would say the repetitions, it's you know, maybe two sets of 15 to start with, um, depending on the person. All right, we'll work up to that point. Once that get easy, then you want to increase the load, gradually the load. Sometimes you'll go four or five pounds, or let's say one pound for one set, and then maybe two pounds for the next set as you warm up. So consider that. So we're going to work on our wrist extensors. We just talked about also wrist flexors. Okay, simple dumbbell. And then the other one we can work on also is working on, you know, uh, what's called pro, uh, supination and pronation. Okay, those are a little bit uh, funnier on how to, to um, uh, set these up. So we're going to hold, we can hold it out to the side here, palm down. We're essentially going to try and turn up like this and then slowly lower it back. Okay, so we can also do it by we place the, um, the palm up put tension, and then let it slowly rotate out like that, causing the eccentric phase. The phase was, and the eccentric is just that, more that lengthening phase, and then concentric is that shortening phase. A lot of our injuries really occur, uh, a lot of types of um, tendon and other problems or tears occur, occur in that lengthening phase, like a rapid lengthening phase when you have an acute trauma. Or so. so we want to work on both phases, but think about holding it like so. You hold the other hand here. This is the arm that's stabilizing. This is the working arm. So all the way out like that, pause, and slowly back down and control it. So one, two, three, out, one, two, three, four. Give a little bit more time for that eccentric phase. Two sets of 15. You should start seeing results, uh, you know, feeling better. Hopefully around the total program, four to six weeks, we start seeing a significant change. You may not ha have to also look at some more fast, rapid movements, um, medicine ball throws, other things that kind of create more rapid movements. Truly in our tennis players, people that are doing things like that, I'll say, I'll talk about um, doing some um, hitting walls against, uh, you know, against a wall, something that's, you can kind of control the parameters, but we want to get used to that rapid loading of the tendon and the sports. If you're doing something that's much more aggressive and fast moving compared to someone that's more sedentary and kind of work on the computer, things like that. But realize that's kind of the, the that's the final phase and sometimes necessary for our more athletic high speed movements that require that quick rapid tendon loading. Okay, so I hope this helps you out. Um, please like and subscribe if you like that and please some comments if it um, gives us some questions about the program and good luck. You know, this is something that you can overcome. Um, but it does need some time and attention. Some things to consider as well is that also in addition to the strictly uh, the program here, we do find that there's some general weakness throughout the upper extremity they find, especially the external rotators of the shoulders and muscles that contribute to that motion. So we, pro we, we see as a general atrophy from the upper extremity 
from hand grip strength all the way to shoulder and scapular strength. So we do want to address that general kind of weakness, especially in people that have had this problem for a while. Hey, hope you have a great day and let's get over this naturally without relying on meds or stopping things we love to do. Have a great day.